Hi everyone, my name is Rui. I'm a product architect at the Research Group. Today we will start our sessions of how to optimize the D400 series of cameras. Uh, we will start with downloading uh, the Research Viewer by going to the SDK website and downloading uh, the Viewer download link. Once we finish downloading, we will start the application. This is uh, how the application starts. In case you have a camera which is connected, you will be able to see it here. Uh, in our example, we have the D455 stereo camera. Uh, the first thing that we need to uh, notice is when clicking the stereo module, we have different options. Uh, starting from resolution, where our maximum resolution for depth output is 720p, all the way down to uh, 256 by 144. Uh, the default resolution is uh, 848 by 840 with the 30 frames per second. Then we should have uh, the different uh, output streams where the depth is the default. You can also choose to output the left and right sensors uh, listed as infrared and infrared 2. Later on, we should have the emitter mode. Again, the default is on, auto exposure, and then we have the different controls of the camera exposure, gains, and laser power, and so on and so on. Let's start with the default uh, settings by uh, starting the camera. I will also start the RGB camera, making sure the same resolution as the depth. And this is the 2D view. We have the depth map and the RGB. Going to the 3D view, we can see the point cloud with the RGB layout on top of it. The default uh, setting for the viewer when it comes to uh, shading is diffused lighting uh, mesh. Uh, we also have flat and all pro point cloud. If we want to see only the depth information, we can go to texture and choose depth where so color is the distance. Next, we should look at the presets, where the presets are pre-configuration of the different parameters of the camera, which we'll go over in later sessions. Uh, we can see there is an optimized uh, preset for hand, hand gesture, and so on. High accuracy preset. So basically, we will increase uh, uh, some thresholds to have better depth on the expense of lower uh, information, lower amount of information. You can see here. Going back to the default. We can see that we have, with a default, much more information, but on the expense of a noisier uh, depth information. This is basically, you can uh, see this as a confidence level of sort. Another very important aspect is the post-processing, uh, where we have the different uh, uh, post-processing uh, settings. Uh, again, we will go over this in later on sessions. I would just like to show you my uh, personal uh, favorite configuration. I will stop the camera, stay with the same resolution, go to 90 frames per second, restart the camera. And now I will stop the post processing. You can see there is quite a large amount of noise. You can see this in this building, but if I will start the post-processing, this comes down and you can see a much clearer uh, depth information. Uh, in this case, this is used mostly part of the temporal filter, which can reduce the noise uh, from frame to frame. And this is the reason why I like to use the 90 frames per second, so I can minimize uh, any uh, motion artifacts. Again, I will show you what happens when I set, take the temporal filter off and on. So this is for the first session. Uh, next session, we will go over the uh, more advanced controls 
of the camera. Uh, I will tell you when and in which situation, uh, which uh, parameter is preferable. And later on, we will continue also to the post-processing uh, parameters. Thank you. Thank you.